Okay, so hopefully you all got a chance to go through them. Um, the first one was just asking the question, what, do you, what can you find about, uh, what's found in the notice.log? And the way you do that is you just look at this note field in the notice log. I, I, I sent it through Brocut, and what you, you, what you find is, you know, th you know three uh, heuristically determined SSH logins, and it, well, I guess I should back up and say, you know, what, basically what a notice it is. I, I mean, Seth kind of went over, but it's just a suggestion of interesting activity that Bro, Bro found out about. And so in this particular notice, that log, what you see is Bro happened to find three SSH logins and uh, one case of somebody trying to brute force a login. And then so... Yeah, password guessing. <coughs> and then so this part uh, tells you to start making some decisions about the notices that it found out about. And what it asks you to do is um, just look at this and, and see what it does. Um, and what it did was, uh, just redefine this uh, notice alarm types. There's some generic types that the, the notice framework provides you with. And a couple of them are, this first one is just an alarm type, which will um, generate the alarm.log, which you should have seen. If you did the exercise, you would have seen you know, you had your, your notice log still, but then there was additional alarm log, which is um, some additional processing of, you know, the interesting activity to say that this is perhaps bad activity that you want to know about. And <clears throat> then the next part of the exercise was uh, uh, just... Uh, Going back to that, I guess, is just filling out this ignored types again to ignore the SSH logins. And so if you did that, what you would have seen was that your notice log gets reduced. So it's applying some more filtering. So at that point, you would have seen um, the SSH login notices would have been removed from your notice.log. And, uh, you would have had an additional alarm.log, which was uh, the password guesser. Um, is Sorry, is there an uh, option to suppress all alarms, like having everything except what you add in the alarm types be the only ones which show up? Um, we, we don't have any particular out-of-the-box support for that, but it would actually be pretty straightforward to add that yourself to the notice policy. but. Unfortunately, the notice policy is sort of a deeper topic that we're not really able to go into a lot of detail with. Um, it, I, I guess, why are, why are you interested in doing that? Well, just interested in, like, if, if I'm looking at only certain things, interested in some things. But I, I don't want to ignore, I want to ignore basically anything else which comes in. Um, one option you have there, and, and this isn't really described, unfortunately, and we glossed over it earlier. Um, where it says local there, that, that, that means a lot more than is obvious from the surface. But you see where it says local after the ssh.pcap and before my advanced policy. Local is actually a script that is basically worth saying, um, this is like a suggested configuration. Um, when you run bro control, it loads that local.bro script. If you're looking for the script, it gets installed in share bro site local.bro. And if you do make install on Bro again, it will not overwrite that file. So you can like make changes. Basically, what that is is like you know your Apache.cfg or, or HTTP.conf or whatever. 
It's like, we're saying that this is probably the right spot to start doing your own customizations when you're writing scripts and if you want to load extra things. But it gives us the opportunity to separate these notions of what Bro does out of the box and then we can suggest a configuration. It loads a number of things. The reason it needs loaded here is because the script that actually does the password guessing detection that uses the metrics framework to do that is implemented in a script that the site local.bro impl is, is implemented there and it loads that script. Because we've tried to get rid of um, in the base distribution, the, the base scripts, they try to only log really and, and do the, an the enable the protocol analyzers. But in the local we've said there's all these like things you can catch, one of them being you know password guessing over SSH. And uh, so that's that's why the local is loaded there. Alternately it could be instead of local protocols slash SSH slash password guessing or, or some, something like that. You can actually look through the scripts and find the script that implements it and see how it works. But uh, yeah, sorry, it's, again, if it looks like a mess, it's because it is. <laughs> and we just didn't have time to do this because we were too busy developing the code for things. Um, so does that, does that kind of answer your question? It's, it's just that it's a thing that people I don't think are going to typically going to want to do that much, so we don't offer that functionality out of the box. But if anyone's interested in how to work deeper with the notice framework, I can certainly explain it. We actually have documentation that I wrote a few weeks ago for, uh, to, for doing <coughs> like these deeper configurations with it. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit. Okay, and so this then the part three was um, um, doing something more advanced with notices, and this is uh, <coughs> going into what Seth was doubtful that we had done, um, but it's redefining the notice policy, and what you what it does is, well, b basically the exercise was asking you to figure out what this does, and by just looking at the code, and so going over that, um, what it does is it defines a set of servers that you're interested in, right here, and um, then it redefines the notice policy, which I mean basically is telling Bro that um, I want to perform some action, or I want to I want to check whether or not I want to perform a certain action on every you know for every notice that's uh, raised, and so this particular check. Um, we'll first check that um, whether or not the notice is a SSH login and whether or not it's in this watch servers list. And if it does, it will uh, create an alarm. And what that action is doing is actually just applying more filtering to create the alarm.log. So this is. Um, what you saw earlier was just a, like a generic filter where you had redef the alarm, the notice colon colon alarm types was just kind of like a generic catch-all. I want you know all SSH logins to be filtered into the alarm.log, but where as this is saying, I just want these couple watch servers, they're pretty important. I just want them to be put in the alarm.log because that's something that's interesting to me. And then there was just uh, this other exercise, which is pretty easy, just asking you to add the remaining SSH server to the watch servers list. So you would have just came up here and added this IP address to that set that was defined at the top of the file. And then finally, there was some extra credit that said, OK, now we know we've seen some two types of notices. One was SSH logins, and another one was password guessings or password guessers and it's asking you to look at this code and see what it does so um, going through it you see um, another set defined um, that's it doesn't have it it's not initialized anywhere but then you, you go down a little bit and see this policy that's handling notices and it has a check for whether or not it's a password guessing notice and if it is, it'll add it to the brute forcers uh, set and return true. Just it's kind of like a, a no op. 
because it requires you to define some return type, um, or return value, rather. And then the second uh, item that's added to the, the policy is of priority zero, so it will um, happen after this. I guess one of the things uh, Matthias told me was that I should have defined a priority up here. and. Actually, it's, there's an implicit default priority for this item, which is 5. So it happens um, in order that this happens. So you see a notice that's password guessing, and you'll add it to brute forcers. And then this one comes along and, and checks notices for whether it's an SSH login and whether it's in brute forcers. And if it is, it triggers an alarm. So that may be a pretty important thing for you to find out whether or not um, there's somebody uh, performing some brute force SSH attacks on your network, and they've succeeded. And this will tell you that pretty easily. And this action alarm can be escalated to something higher, like uh, just an email or something like that. But that was pretty hard to demonstrate in the exercise, so I just left it at alarm. Any questions? So I think uh, now there's no break as we go into the next exercise. So um, if you just want to pull that up and start working on it. Um, it's mainly, um, it's meant, to, it starts out pretty easy with some like hello world type stuff just to get you familiar with how to program in Bro. And eventually I think it, I tried to make it build up to the point where you realize this types of stuff that Bro can do. So. You'll, you'll start to see that as you go through each part of the exercise, it'll start off kind of easy and then escalate to something that's a little bit more difficult. So um, uh, you go ahead and get started. And if you, know, if you get stuck at any point, just raise your hand and uh, you know, somebody will come along and help you work through it. <laughs> 